Hello, I'm Yong Hao Zhou from Tsinghua University. I'm very glad to share our paper about the fuzzing TCP stacks. The TCP protocol is a transport layer network protocol that receives system calls and packets to provide reliable data transmission. It carries over 85% of network traffic nowadays. In practice, the TCP protocol has different implementations forming different TCP stacks. Each modern operating system, such as Linux, FreeBSD, and NetBSD, has its own kernel-level TCP stack to provide fundamental network support for user-level applications. Besides, to achieve better performance and reduce impact on OS kernels, many user-level TCP stacks, such as MTCP, TLDK, and FStack, have been developed and widely used in telecom systems and network nodes to transfer data without OS involvement. Though TCP stacks are critical, they are complex and error prone, as the TCP stack has rich functionalities such as reliable transmission and congestion control, complex state model, and various kinds of possible exceptions to handle. Thus, developers may unintentionally make mistakes when implementing TCP stacks, introducing bugs that can cause serious problems including memory bugs such as no point of reference used out of free, and semantic bugs such as RFC violation by the handling of exceptional packets. To understand the proportion of memory bugs and semantic bugs in existing TCP stacks, we select three open source and widely used TCP stacks, including FreeBSD TCP, MTCP, and TLDK to study their commits. In our study, we first select the bug fixing commits from January 2017 to December 2019, resulting in 201 commits. And then we manually read each commit to identify whether it fixed memory bugs or semantic bugs. The table shows the study results. 87% of bug fixing commits are related to semantic bugs. Namely, most of the reported bugs in TCP stacks are semantic bugs. This figure shows an example commit of fixing a semantic bug in FreeBSD TCP stack. The annotation of this commit describes that it fixed a RFC 7323 violation. Specifically, the TCP stack mistakenly accepted the packets with decreasing time step values. To fix the bug, this commit adds several checks about the time step value to drop invalid packets. To help test TCP stacks, we analyzed different TCP stacks and find that they have three common features. First, a TCP stack receives both packets from network drivers and syscalls from application as inputs, and it outputs the syscalls result to applications and response packets to network drivers. The syscall and packets have dependencies with each other. Second, a TCP stack works according to a basic state model defined in the RFC 793, which has 11 states and 20 state transitions. For real-world TCP stack, there are often more states and state transitions specific to the TCP stack's implementation. Third, each TCP stack works based on some regular semantic rules that stipulate how these calls and packets should be handled. Most of these semantic rules are explicitly described in RFC documents. For example, the RFC 7323 document describes how to handle the time step option in the TCP packet header. However, some semantic rules are not explicitly described in RFC documents. To meet about TCP features, we propose three key techniques, a dependency-based strategy to generate effective test cases, a transition-guided fuzzing approach to improve the coverage of states and state transitions, and a differential checker to detect semantic bugs. We first introduce our dependency-based strategy. An original input sequence consists of several items, which are six calls and packets. Our strategy mutates it to generate new input sequence. As shown in the figure, for each item in the original input sequence, our strategy first selects a mutation type, including deletion, addition, replacement, and change. Then it mutates this item by considering dependencies with the previously handled items. At present, we have implemented 15 dependency rules by referring to RFC documents and syscall usage conventions. Specifically, there are three kinds of dependencies, 
sys call to sys call, packet to packet, and sys call to packet dependency. For example, a packet to packet dependency rule is that the order and control flags of three way handshake and four way handshake packets are never changed. Existing protocol fasting approaches use code coverage as program feedback to cover different protocol states. However, besides states, TCP stacks also have many state transitions that heavily affect TCP execution. Moreover, as shown in the figure, two test cases covering the same states may cover different state transitions. T1 and T2 both cover the three states, and thus existing fuzzing approaches identifies T2 to be useless, as it fails to cover new states. But T1 and T2 cover different state transitions, so T2 is useful in covering new state transitions. To effectively describe both states and state transitions, we propose a new coverage metric, branch transition. A state transition can be described as the transition between two covered states due to two adjacent input items, namely the change of branch coverage between these input items as the formula here. The figure illustrates branch transition using an example. Each state is described using a branch coverage vector which contains the executed situation of each branch in TCP code. Then the state change between the current and previous item is represented as the subtraction of their branch coverage vectors. Finally, the branch transition of the current input item is obtained as a two-dimensional vector containing its branch coverage vector and the calculated subtraction vector. Our fuzzing approach uses branch transition as program feedback to effectively cover both states and state transitions. Different TCP stacks should obey identical thematic rules, and thus they should produce identical or similar outputs for the same inputs. Otherwise, these TCP stacks have implementation inconsistency, indicating that some of them possibly have thematic bugs. Based on this idea, we design a differential checker for TCP stacks to detect thematic bugs that cause output inconsistencies. As shown in the figure, our differential checker provides the same input sequences to multiple TCP stacks then records and compares these outputs to identify and report inconsistencies. The user can check these inconsistencies to find related semantic bugs. Based on the three key techniques, we propose a novel fuzzing framework named TCP fuzz to effectively test TCP stacks and detect bugs. We have implemented TCP fuzz using clone and package drill. Overall, it consists of four parts. Code analyzer uses Clown to compile and instrument TCP stacks. Test case generator uses our transition-based fuzzing approach and dependency-based strategy to generate input sequences. Runtime monitor collects runtime information. First, it collects covered branches and calculates branch transitions to provide feedback to our fuzzing approach. Second, it calls package drill interfaces to receive the outputs of each TCP stack and provides them to our differential checker. TCP files has three kinds of bug checkers to detect both memory bugs and semantic bugs. First, it uses three-party synthesizers to detect memory bugs. Second, we implement a data validator to detect semantic bugs leading to incorrect data transfer of TCP stacks. Third, it uses the differential checker to compare the outputs of multiple TCP stacks. As shown in the figure, TCP files is deployed in a server client mode. The server generates test cases and validates data. Clients run the test TCP stacks with third-party sanitizers. In this way, TCP files can use the different checker in multiple TCP stacks to detect their semantic bugs. To validate the effectiveness of TCP files, we use it to actual test five open source and widely used TCP stacks, including three user-level ones and two kernel-level ones. The table shows the basic information about the five tested TCP stacks. For each TCP stack, we tested it for 48 hours. The following results include covered branches and branch transitions, as well as found bugs. Note that TCP stack does not instrument the two kernel level TCP stacks, and thus their covered branches and branch transitions are not obtained. TCP files cover many more branch transitions than branches, indicating that TCP stacks have more state transitions than states during execution. TCP files find 56 real bugs in the five tested TCP stacks, including eight memory bugs and 48 thematic bugs, 
We reported these bugs to related developers and 40 of them had been confirmed. Besides, 23 of the confirmed bugs have been fixed. We perform the comparison in two ways. First, we compare TCP fast to two classical and widely used fasting approaches, namely AFL and SysColor. Considering that AFL and SysColor cannot directly test TCP stacks, we implement an AFL Lite and SysColor like fasting tool for comparison. Specifically, the AFL Lite tool only generates packet sequence according to code coverage by considering dependencies between packets. The SysColor like tool only generates syscall sequences according to code coverage by considering dependencies between syscalls. Second, we compare TCP fast to three state of the art and open source protocol fasting approaches, namely BUFAS, Fast Ocean, and AFLNet. In the experiments, we select TLDK as a target. We first compare the testing coverage. The figure plus the covered branch transitions of two fasting tools and TCP fast. We find that TCP fast covers many more branch transitions than the two fasting tools. It indicates that generating two dimensional test cases is more effective in improving test coverage than generating only one dimensional test cases. Then we compare the bugs that each tool can find. The AFL like and SysColor tools find seven and four bugs, respectively. TCP fast finds all these bugs and 17 missed bugs due to covering more branch transitions. BuFast finds one no-pointer dereference, and fast Ultron and AFL do not find any bug. Indeed, the three fasting tools only generate packets according to code coverage without considering the dependencies between packets. Thus, they miss many useful state transitions due to ineffective test case generation and limited program feedback. TCP fast finds the no-pointer dereference found by BuFast, and it also finds 27 bugs missed by the three fasting tools due to using the three key techniques. At last, we make a conclusion of our paper. TCP stacks are compact and error prone, and they are hard to test. We develop a novel fasting framework named TCP fast to effectively test TCP stacks and detect bugs. It uses three key techniques. First, a dependency-based strategy to generate effective test cases. Second, a transition-guided fasting approach to improve the coverage of state transitions. Third, a differential checker to detect semantic bugs. We have evaluated TCP fast on five widely used TCP stacks and find 56 real bugs. We also compare TCP fast to existing fasting approaches and it outperforms these approaches. That's all, thanks for listening. If you have any questions, please contact us.